I've always wanted to use my STM32 microcontroller with an IoT application. So with the help of RYWB116 Wi-Fi Bluetooth module, this has become possible. But how am I going to let my smartphone communicate with my microcontroller? Today in this video, we are going to build an HTTP server using Flask framework and let it run on a local network to make such communication possible. And we will go through database management, JSON request, HTTP server backend and frontend design and learn how to interface the Wi-Fi module that we have and discuss the whole system advantages and disadvantages and how we are going to improve it in the future. We are going to build an IoT application literally from scratch today so without any further ado, let's jump on in! This video is sponsored by PCBWay PCBWay is not only a professional and high quality printed circuit board manufacturer but they also have CNC cutting, 3D printing, metal sheet fabrication and injection molding services so it's the right choice where you can get all your project components from one single place and they are now having discount on 4 layer and 6 layer PCB manufacturing so don't miss your chance before getting started I want to highlight a point here uh, the application that I'm building today is not restricted for a specific microcontroller uh, ESP32, Raspberry Pi or any microcontroller with Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection capability can use such application so enjoy alright so let's start with Flask firmware development which uses uh, Python I'm not expert in Python but I can survive we need to go through some of the points here because we are going to use them in STM32 programming so let me highlight the important stuff here to give you a general idea about the whole project so as you can see here we have the keys that we are going to use in our project we have uh, flask, uh, SQL alchemy, uh, JSON so now let's see how these elements are used throughout the project uh, here we have first of all the database SQL Alchemy is initialized we have two columns and they are the ID which is the primary key uh, which means that it will be incremented automatically uh, after each uh, row uh, and I have a data in order to store a button value so it is possible to store the last logic state of a button in the front end side and we are going to see how we are going to link this database to the front end side and after that we initialize a home page and give it a root uh, and this page will be accessed using uh, post and get HTTP requests so to give you a short summary about HTTP it's a protocol based over TCP IP and it's used for exchanging data between the server that we are constructing through this web page and the client which can be the STM32 with the Wi-Fi module or any smart device like smartphone or a PC so first of all we check if this web page is accessed through HTTP POST request and then obtain the data from the HTML form and we can see this uh, right over here it's nothing but a button and the value passed will be either 0 or 1 so let's get back to the Python side after that we get the row from the database which has the ID 1 and pass the obtained data from the HTML side to this database column and then we we'll commit the modified data in the database in order to update it and after that an HTML file is rendered and the value obtained and updated in the database is passed with the HTML file in order to decide which button to display to the user whether it is the on button or off button so otherwise if this page is not accessed with a POST request the data will be obtained from the database and passed directly with the HTML file in order to display the current state of the button without updating it and here we have another web page with a different uh, route so if this page is requested by the client the current state of the button will be read and then it's passed in form of a JSON file so it can be parsed by the microcontroller so we can decide to do an action depending on the value included in this JSON file uh, so now if we have a look at the HTML file that we are rendering so in this HTML file the only important part is this one and I have only two buttons to display to the user uh, 
uh, and depending on the value passed from the back end from the flask part uh, i'm showing that button so yeah let's run the server and interface with it when running the flask server pay attention to the ip address that you are running on this ip for example will be public within my local network so every device connected to my network can access this server all right so now let's run the server and in order to run the server i need to show you the terminal uh, only type python and uh, the application name that we are running and now we can see that our flask server has started to run with the ip address that we have passed before with this port number all right so now we can access our server using this link just over here yes it's working right now so yes now as you can see i can toggle the value in the database by pressing on this button notice that this uh, web server can be accessed by any smart device connected to the network it can be a personal computer or a smartphone or the stm32 with the wi-fi module or any other mcu with wi-fi connection capability and there's one more thing i want to show you here guys before moving to the embedded part uh, the J json request that we have implemented yeah so this is how our mcu is going to receive the data in a form of a json which will be more convenient instead of uh, getting the whole html uh, file from the server we can get only the json part where we have the data that we are interested in all right so now let's get back to our old stuff and concentrate on stm32 microcontroller programming here i have the mcu configuration i don't have actually something special i only have the uart uh, configured with the dma and i have the module reset a few leds nothing special so let's skip this part and start with the programming all right so the functionality of this firmware is to interface the wi-fi module that we are going to use today which is uh, rywb116 from reax and at the beginning i will be using the initialization sequence that they are recommending in order to save time so here is how i've implemented that part we can see this in the module uh, library and here are all the necessary commands in order to configure the module and connect it to your local wi-fi network and of course other than that i have the module handler to keep track of how things are going on so let's get back to the main so at the beginning we have some peripherals and handler initialization and inside the while loop we have the tasks we are going to go through them uh, so first we start with the wi-fi module initialization sequence uh, and during the initialization sequence you will notice that the onboard blue LED will be toggled just as an indication for that period of time so if we have a quick look at the module configuration sequence I'm actually using the ones that are recommended by the documentation uh, but the one that you need to change in your case are the SID password and the SID name because this will depend on your network credential so pay attention for that and at the end of the configuration uh, I'm resetting this flag in order to let the system know that the configuration uh, has been completed uh, we can have a quick look at the AT command set that I'm using just like this nothing quite special so let's get back to our code and when the module configuration is completed this task can be started in order to send http get request every one second so this is actually quite important and it shows us how inefficient http get request is for iot application because the mcu side uh, needs to know the button status on the web server side and the only way to do that is to send http get request periodically which is nothing but waste of time and waste of resources so another way of doing that would be when any change happens on the server side the server side should notify my mcu directly which can be done in other protocol i am going to talk about in the future so if you are interested subscribe to this channel and you won't regret it so yeah let's have a look at the http get request uh, let's see what we are sending so here's the string uh, that i'm sending uh, it's the at command uh, with the ip address that i want to access with the port number and here i have the url that we were talking about it's the json request in order to get only the important data out of the web server 
all right so now let me show you what would happen if we don't use the json get method uh, so here i've connected the module to the ftdi uh, usb uart converter and now i'm connecting to the ftdi serial port all right so now let's start sending the module configuration uh, sequence yes so here we come uh, let me remove this url so we can get the whole uh, http even html uh, page yes so here we are as you can see the http get request got us the whole html page which is quite bad for uh, data parsing uh, and it will be actually a waste of data and waste of time so json request will be the ideal case for us so let's carry on with it all right so that was our purpose of using uh, json request so let's get back to the main and see the rest of the tasks okay so our next task is uh, http get notify this task only run when http get request response is received to the wi-fi module and we can see that the http response header is compared against the dma buffer so we can determine the type of the received packet uh, so let's get back to our tasks so in the http get notify task we see the uart rx dma buffer is passed to the json parser uh, i'm using nx json parser library uh, i found this library on github it's quite useful and easy to use i'll put its link in the video description so you can have a look at it so now let's see how we utilize this uh, library so what this parser does is actually it determines the elements inside the json object uh, and it determines the key and their values because the wi-fi module will be returning the following data uh, the json content we can see it from here and here are the keys the id and the value and here are their content uh, one id one and zero is the state of the button and here is what the user is going to see in the front end side just like we are seeing here uh, we pass the json pointer and the key that we are looking for and the obtained value will be returned to this variable and according to the value inside this variable we can either turn off or on the onboard led of course this is just an example uh, don't restrict your thinking with uh, turning on and off leds we can pass any data and do several actions that's what i'm actually going to do in the future tutorials i'm going to extend this project and make it more useful and include more components so it can be a general iot application all right so now let me connect uh, my mcu and let this code uh, run on it and we can see all the http get and post requests from our flask server terminal so yeah all right so now as you can see the module is sending uh, continuously uh, http get request and at the same time i'm sending post request in order to change the button status so actually now after every post request i can see how the led is being toggled let's use a smartphone and see how everything is working together all right so now i have everything running uh, i can toggle the led using my smartphone on and off just like this uh, so here is my phone uh, it's connected to the flask web server and the module the react module that you can see over here they are both connected to the server that we have implemented uh, so as you can see i've made the stm32 connect to a web server and build an iot application a simple iot application actually uh, as i've just mentioned it don't restrict to your thinking we're just toggling LEDs because uh, we can build more awesome stuff that I'm planning to do in the future. So now let's discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this uh, implementation. So using JSON request, we get rid of uh, the HTTP big header. Uh, so we don't have to get the all HTML file and parse the data that we want. Uh, and now I can actually install more IoT devices to my network. Uh, like this uh, ESP32 and the ESP8266 uh, uh, this one uh, one more disadvantage is that uh, in order to let this system running I need to keep my PC uh, turned on uh, because when I turn off my uh, PC the flask server will be turned off and none of this uh, MCU will be able to get data from the local uh, server 
so a solution for that is is to install the Flask uh, web server over this Raspberry Pi, uh, which is nothing but a small computer and keep it running day and night so i'm actually quite excited to build more uh, interesting iot applications so now this brings me to the end of this tutorial uh, if you have learned something new please share subscribe and tell your friends about useful electronics stay tuned and bye bye